Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch back with you at the Pepsi Southern 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Here's the battle for 13th position. Right now, we're on board with Dale Jarrett, who is in 14th. I'd like to get up there and pass Terry Labonte. Well, actually, Terry Labonte just passed him coming by the start-finish line and took that uh, position away. John Kernan has more on Jarrett. Dale Jarrett just radioed in and told Todd Carrick that uh, it's a little bit far has gotten loose on him, especially in the center of the turn. Now, Labonte and his crew have been talking about pitting in about 15 to 20 more laps. We anticipate DJ being on the same schedule, but right now, Dale Jarrett, the point leader, has a handful with a loose race car. On board now with Rusty Wallace, who's back there in 15th position. And for a taste of the race, let's check out the telemetry on Rusty's car from Brian Meats. So he gets down to 6,000 RPMs, about 125 miles per hour. And we battle for the lead. Here comes Gordon on the inside of Jeremy Mayfield in turn three. And guess what? Put the DuPont Chevrolet. Ned, I think you're right. He had those tires, the air pressure down. He just rode around and got the air pressure built back up and that 24 car back in front. Oh, look at all this traffic right in front of him. And the 20 car just continues to drop back and now he stands a good chance of going a lap down here. That's Tony Stewart, of yeah, course. He's dropped all the way back to 27th. Bill, what's going on? Well, the handle's just totally gone away. Uh, they told Tony to be patient and just try and find your rhythm. He said, I'm doing all I can do right now. Gordon going to go around him. They're going to put the car back where it was when they pit again, but after about three or four cars in a row went by him as he falls behind Gordon. Now Mayfield in a pack looking at the 20 car. Tony goes, is there anybody on the track that hasn't passed us yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not a common sight in 1999. Tony Stewart getting lapped and losing positions. It's usually the other way. Things are not going well here, at least in the first third of this Pepsi Southern 500 back in 30th position. Now, BP, we interrupted you. Actually, you interrupted yourself when, uh, when we had the lead change. So let's go back on board with Rusty. Now, we've several laps on these tires, and you'll see when you go into our telemetry on our Brian Meets onboard taste of the race, you'll see down to 100 and what, 20, 118 miles per hour, about 6,000 RPM. The tires are worn. So I would expect to see much more than about 8,500 RPMs down the front stretch, about 85, 86. Now, when they put new tires on and we go back on board with Rusty Wallace on the Miller Light car, we're probably looking at, at 9,000 RPMs and a lot more miles per hour. Tony Stewart has had enough. He is rolling in, Bill. 4,100 RPM in second gear for the Home Depot Pontiac. They're going to make a wedge adjustment, put a round and a half in the left rear, and then try and get the car back to where it was on the first one. Very frustrating run here for Tony Stewart. Again, he's one of the guys eligible for the noble $5 million bonus. Right sides are on. I'm around for the left sides on. Plenty of fuel in there. They clean the grill, and uh, now Tony will try it again. Again, the pit road speed, 4,100. 65 off pit road, and Bill Elliott also hitting pit road now. As is Kenny Wallace, so we are seeing some early pit stops here on board with Bill as he stops the McDonald's for and the crew goes to work in Kenny Wallace. Also in Bill Weber. On the 55 and the 94, both getting right side tires, a track bar adjustment for Bill Elliott to come around to the left side on both these cars. 109 laps now on the board here at Darlington. Fuel going in. Kenny Wallace will leave first, having some trouble on the left rear on Elliott's car. Long stop for Bill Elliott. Back out. And you see him smoking those rear tires when he lets the clutch out? That's not good. You want to pit just put, put, put out behind the pit area here because the pit road is worn as a racetrack and it abrasive. It. it will wear the tires as you try to exit pit road if you use too much accelerator. The top two here, Rusty, rather uh, Jeff Gordon and Jeremy Mayfield, separated by just a couple of car links. third about one and three quarter seconds behind the leader Mark Martin and Joe Nemechek complete the top five so Joe Nemechek is having a good run he's having a terrific run the last three or four laps 
He has been the fastest car on the racetrack. They received Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car, move into the 11th position, passing Kenny Irwin. He has it's been marching right up through the field, Terry Labonte has. Started way back there in 37th position. Once again, he told us on NASCAR today that he felt like he had a great car, just didn't qualify well. And once again, that's proven to be correct. Terry Labonte is in his 42nd consecutive race here at Darlington. His very first start in his career was 21 years ago in this race in September 1978. And his first win came here at Darlington 19 years ago in the Pepsi Southern 500 in 1980. Ooh, Mark Martin just bobbled and lost one position to Nemechek. Cost him a spot as he came off turn four. Car got a little bit loose, and Nemechek just there to pounce on top of it. Nemechek is now is only just a little under four seconds behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. Joe Nemechek, of course, will not be back in this car in the year 2000. Where will he be? Don't know yet. Jerry Punch has more. I spoke with Joe Nemechek in the garage this morning, guys, and he said a lot of people have called him, and obviously one of the places he would love to be considered to go would be the Robert Yates car. So would Johnny Benson, so would Wally Dallenbach, and anyone else who's out of a ride and would like to be able to run up front. But the question has been, they said Joe can qualify well and start well, but they question his aggressiveness once the green flag dropped. I think that made Joe mad, so he wanted to prove something today with running up front here at a tough racetrack to show he could get the job done if he got a chance in the 28 car. All right, now Kenny Irwin is headed toward Robert Yates and the crew as he is looking for a ride. He will not be in this car next year. Jerry, let's call his stop. And indeed, he would like to be able to show people that he can get the job done. Had a great run going here in the spring. And was running 10th when he got called in an accident late in the race and ended up getting a disappointing finish outside the top 30. Left side tires now going on. Slight air pressure adjustment. They're cleaning the windshield. And now Kenny Irwin, our pole center, is down and away. And John Andretti comes in on the backstretch pit. The STP Pontiac slides to a stop. Coming in there also is Dale Jarrett on the back stretch. And John Kernan is right there. Dale Jarrett pulls into his pit stall. This is what they want, pitting on the back. They want pit stops to go under the green flag because they think that it's a lot easier to enter this back stretch pits. They will make a chassis adjustment around and a half down on the left rear to try and tighten the car up. DJ had radioed in just two laps ago and said that it was very, very he is away to Dr. Jerry Punch. And they put the handle in the right rear. Ward Burton's going to drop the track bar and try to help the rear into the car. Ward Burton said the car, the rear of the car is terrible after about 15 laps. By the way, they were able to fix the throttle thing. Ward did something pop, and the throttle came back up. He is now down and away as they await the pit stop of Jeff Gordon and Jeremy Mayfield, who are going to pit at the same time, probably next time by. They're coming right now, Jerry. They're coming towards you, coming off of the second turn. Bobby Labonte coming in as well. Ken Schrader is in. See Jeffrey Bodine stopping just in front of Jeff Gordon. As Dale Earnhardt exits pit road, here comes Gordon into his pit crew as Jeremy Mayfield stops and they go to work on the right side. Jerry Punch. Watch the right rear. They're going to put a handle it, make a wedge adjustment. Gordon's car still a little bit loose. Mayfield is in for an air pressure. That's what I'm going to put a bill. I mean, Mayfield already has right side tires, left side's going on. And he's away. Jerry. Windshield being cleaned on Jeff Gordon's car. He is down and away. And Mayfield and Jeffrey Bodine will follow Gordon back out. Let's go back up to Bill. And Jeff Burton makes the slow trip down pit road and slides to a stop. Remember, they're going to try and give him that cushion this time so he can shield his leg from the heat. He was everyone's favorite coming into this race. They're going to make a chassis adjustment, a major chassis adjustment on the right side. Right side tire is already going on. Left side tire is being put on now. Fuel going in. Expecting his teammate Mark Martin on pit road. Burton's going to have to weave his way out of pit road. Remember, he had contact with Gordon earlier when he stopped under yellow. Joe Nemechek had taken the lead, but he now is in the pits. And it's the first time that Joe Nemechek has ever led here at Darlington and the fourth race of 1999 that he has led most recently at Daytona. To John Kernan as Terry Labonte pits. 
Right side's already on, left side's going on. No chassis adjustment. Just a little bit slow with the left front tire. Cost him maybe a second or two seconds. And Terry Labonte is down and away to Dr. Jerry Punch. Elliot Sandler, who's having a heck of a run today, getting service out from the Wood Brothers, who have won 10 times at Darlington Raceway. Slight air pressure got from the car, just a bit loose. Left side tire going on the Simco. Four cars, and they get the windshield clean. Tested here twice before the spring race and about three weeks ago because he felt he could never quite get the handle on this racetrack. His car started to tighten up again. They made a little bit of an air pressure adjustment. He's on his way, 4,200 second gear. Martin did pick up five bonus points for leading, however, led one lap before he came in for the stop. That'll probably cost him a good bit of time out on the racetrack since the other stopped earlier. They'll be running about two seconds a lap faster than he was running. But, of course, he has the new tires on there now, but I think it was worth it to get those five bonus points. And so everything recycles back to Jeremy Mayfield as the leader on the track as he comes up on the 98 car of Rick Mast. 121 laps are in the books in the 1999 Pepsi Southern 500. The Pepsi Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway here on ESPN is being brought to you by Daytona USA, the official attraction of NASCAR. By AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. And by Brian, the flavor of the South, proud sponsor of car number 30. At Darlington Raceway, South Carolina, 125 laps completed and the second round of pit stops have been accomplished. Jeremy Mayfield is the leader of the race. Jeff Burton is second right now, about a second behind. Jeff Gordon third, then Nima Cech and Mark Martin. This is Ricky Rudd between the two cars. The planners, peanuts on board camera. Looking out the back as Jeff Burton closes in. Ricky Rudd goes on the inside of Wally Dolan back. Now Jeff Burton trying to do the same thing. He will. There are 23 cars on the lead lap. 40 and the 17 are having a good battle. This is Sterling Marlin and Matt Kenseth and Kenseth continues to be in the top 10 a great run for the young man who is not yet a rookie in the Winston Cup Series will be next year John Kernan Bob during that round of pit stops Matt had worked his way all the way up to the seventh position but they had a problem with the right rear a little bit slow getting that changed and that cost him a few seconds it cost him three spots out on the racetrack now he makes the pass and moves around into ninth he is a rookie, but not a, a rookie contender in the Raybestos Rookie of the Year running. Watch that, huh? Oh, look at that. That's one advantage to being a rookie, Ned. He just doesn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take chances that some others who have been bit by this racetrack won't take. He does have experience on this racetrack, and the Bush Series has won here. So it isn't sure. exactly a uh, unfamiliar territory to him. David Green has gone behind the wall. Why, John? Bob, the uh, camshaft is broken on the 41 car, and so they're going to pull the distributor out just to make sure, but they think the camshaft is broken on the 41. So that car is off the racetrack. Earlier in the event, we had a crash involving Jerry Nadeau and Mike Skinner. Those two cars are off the racetrack, but other than that, everybody is still running. And once again, just like before, Jeff Gordon came out right behind Jeremy Mayfield, but Jeremy has passed, has pulled away from Jeff Gordon. As a matter of fact, Jeff Burton has moved by him in the second spot. Jeff Gordon back to third spot, but at the end of this run, we once again expect to see Jeff Gordon be one of the faster cars. And Ricky Rudd still staying right there between the two cars of Jeremy Mayfield and Jeff Burton. He is 24th. A lap down position between the first and second runners. War 
Bernard Burton and Bobby Hamilton running here in the sixth and seventh position. Bobby Hamilton's been on the move since his pit stop. He had dropped back to about tenth position, but now has taken over the sixth position from Ward Burton and is just marching right on up through there. Bobby finished 41st at Bristol last week and as a result lost three positions in the point. Oh, trouble here on the front straightaway. Michael front Walker. Stretch, caution is out. Wave him off behind you. Spin on the front stretch. Wave these guys off. Car sitting in the middle of the group. Has to start finishing up. Stay the 20 car of Tony Stewart went down pit road. It could have been an evasive uh, maneuver. I, I think that he was coming into the pits, Bob, for a, an unscheduled pit stop. Bill? Yeah, he had talked it over with uh, Greg Zipidelli. They couldn't figure out what the problem was. It was more than just the tires when he came in last time. They are speculating it might be a rear end gear problem that they might have had once before in uh, the Bush car. They were going to check that out, but he was on pit road when the seven crashed. They told him to get back out as quick as he could without speeding. Pit road right now closed while they uh, capture the field. Second caution of the afternoon. It involves Michael Walter, but it was right here on the front straightaway. Up at the top of your screen, you see the car coming off of turn four. And, wow, head in contact with that inside retaining wall. And then he comes back up uh, sort of to the middle of the racetrack, and you see the leaders Whoa. coming up through there. And Ricky Rudd looks like might have got back in front of Jeremy Mayfield there and got back on the lead lap. And Darrell Waltrip also racing, trying to get a lap back. Darrell was already four laps down. Tony Stewart is having problems, and so is the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. Both of these drivers, no bull five candidates, Doc. And it's not a very good day for either one of them. Bobby Labonte, just a moment ago, said that the car had begun to sputter. They thought that may be a plug wire off, but now they're thinking it may be more internal in the engine, maybe with a valve or possibly the head of a valve. They may have dropped the valve. They're going to come in. They're going to change four tires, try to get him back out, and then Ray will come back in and raise the hood. And Steve Allen, one of the engine men, will go underneath the hood and see if they can figure out what the problem is. They're hoping it may be a spark plug wire, but it was getting sicker and sicker those last couple of laps. So the pit road now was not open. The reason they decided to come in because the penalty would be you have to go to the back of the longest line anyway. So go ahead and make one stop and come around and make another stop because it's going to be in the back of the pack anyway when the restart occurred. Not a great deal lost there for Bobby. And Jerry, I mean, it didn't sound like the thing was hitting on all eight cylinders when it left pit road. It didn't sound too good, but. Take another look at the at the wreck coming off of turn two. And Michael Walter, was that Jimmy Spencer that he was racing with coming off the turn? It looked like a red and white car. But anyway, Michael spun down to the inside, hit the inside retaining wall pretty hard. And here come the leaders. Look, there was enough room for the 12 car and the and the 10 car to be able to get by. Close call there for the leader, Jeremy Mayfield. Caution is out for the second time in the Pepsi Southern 500. Pit Road finally opens here as a result of this crash that occurred on the front straightaway. And here come those on the lead lap down for a stop. Bill Weber. Jeremy Mayfield and Jeff Burton following each other down pit road. Mayfield two stalls ahead. He'll make a wedge adjustment. It's air pressure only for Burton. And they also want to make sure they clean the grill and get one layer of plastic off the windshield. Burton sitting on pit road, tosses out the water bottle. He also got a bag of ice. Left sides are on. The 12 of the 99 are heading toward Jerry Punch. Four tires, clean the windshield, no adjustments. Mayfield goes by. Gordon will jump in line right in front of Jeff Burton. Busy back on the back stretch, John. Dale Jarrett is in the go two and a half rounds down on the track bar on the right side to tighten the car up just a little bit. Here come Mayfield, Gordon, and those guys, but a good stop going for Jarrett. He's still one that's tight. He's down and away. Terry Labonte is away. And Matt Kenseth is also on pit road getting service. I think all of Jarrett's pit stops have been uh, in the 15-second range, but the 40 cars behind the wall, Bill. Yeah, they're heading that way, Bob. Hole in the radiator, it was smoke billowing from underneath the hood. They brought Sterling back, and they actually brought him down pit road uh, 
uh, a lap early. Then they put uh, raised the hood, put the water in, found the hole in the radiator. He's behind the wall. Dale Earnhardt makes a pit stop. Jim Goodrich plus Chevy getting fresh tires on the left side. Fuel going in. Now Earnhardt had gone a lap down during the exchange really on the green flag pit stop. We'll take a break and be back with more of our live coverage from Darlington, South Carolina of the Pepsi Southern 500. Stay with us. ESPN, glad to have you with us on this Labor Day Sunday weekend for the running of the 50th Pepsi Southern 500 from Darlington in South Carolina. Jerry Nadeau, earlier in the race, flat spot of the tires. Ryan Pemberton looked on. Then, seconds later, the car gets up into the wall, right front tire down, hits the wall hard, collects Mike Skinner in the process. Jerry Nadeau was taken out of the car. He got out of the car with his own power, but just for observation, he has been taken to Carolina Medical Center, and they did airlift him there. Nothing of urgency as far as his medical condition is concerned. They just want to avoid all the Labor Day traffic and get him there as quickly as possible. Bobby Labani is in the pits. Carolina's Medical Center is in Charlotte, and I'm sure that's where Nadu preferred to go back home, so that's a couple hours away. Jerry Punch? And guys, Bobby Labonte coming back in to top it off. They've gone over with the crayon and been marked the exhaust headers, and it's firing on all eight cylinders, but according to Steve Allen, it's probably broken something, maybe a lifter inside, and as he put it, it's getting ugly inside the motor, so they're going to try to ride it out the best they can, but they, they probably won't make it, according to some of the long faces here, and folks, that's going to be tough. He's third in the points. So among the Noble five drivers, really the only two that are in contention at this point, at least in the top ten, would be Jeff Burton, who is running third, and Mark Martin, who is in the eighth position. Well, ESPN is in its tenth season of covering Major League Baseball for you on Sunday night and at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight. The matchup involves the Yankees and the Angels. The defending world champion Yanks trail the Indians by one game in the race for the best record in the American League. Join us at 8 o'clock tonight here on ESPN for Sunday Night Baseball. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. And we see Jeff Burton driving by Jeff Gordon once again on the green flag situation, taking over the second position. There's an Napa field summary points really changing as a result of what's happened so far here with Gordon up one and Jeff Burton up one. And Tony Stewart, the one dropping out of the top five. Tony is having a tough day. He's back in the eighth position. Bobby Hamilton go by Ward Burton. The Kodak Film Chevrolet takes over the sixth position. Hamilton trying to run that Jeremy Mayfield line as Rusty Wallace goes on the bottom of the racetrack to Miller Light for Taurus. back here and right in the middle of it is the points leader Dale Jarrett. You don't like to be in that situation but he lost eight positions on the pit stop that was under 16 seconds as a result of hitting on the backstretch. On board with Ricky Rudd who runs in 16th spot who did get his lap back on the leader Jeremy Mayfield in that last caution flag when Michael Walter and we see Matt Kenneth just drive up on the inside of Ricky Rudd trying to take over 16th. But coming off his best performance of 1999 last weekend at Bristol, he finished in third spot, but he loses the position to Matt Kenseth here. Boy, I tell you what, right behind them is a dog fight going on between all these cars. Terry Labonte included. Labonte's back in 18th. Of course, Terry is one of those drivers pitting on the back stretch as well, and he lost a lot of positions on that uh, pit stop. Steve Park, Kyle Petty, Brett Bodine racing wheel to wheel with Bill Elliott looking on and Hutchinson. Steve Park, the Pennzoil Chevrolet is back in the 19th spot. Both the 11 and 44 are elapsed down. Here's Elliott trying to go three wide down the back stretch. Oh, to go too wide here, but Elliott was able to pull it off. Tony 
Tony Stewart, meanwhile, another one of the Noble Five drivers back in 28th position, and he is a lap down. Watch the latest, Bill. Bob, they don't know what it is, but they know what it isn't, so they suspect that he has a broken... Oh, trouble down in turn three. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Stay oh, I see down, other down. cars crashing. Jared, on, it looked on, like got on, through, but a lot of cars running around him didn't, including Matt Kenseth. Steve Grissom was the one to originally crash. A couple of other badly damaged cars to the left of your screen there. And Ken that would Wallace. Be, and Ted Musgrave. What that looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's got some damage there on the left rear, but boy, he dodged a big bullet right there. He had just passed Kenny Wallace coming off of turn two, going down the backstretch and then that started happening in front of him and he slowed down he got slowed down enough but it looked like somebody hit him from the rear but not uh, doesn't look like there's a lot of damage to it there we see the nine car steve grissom going down smacking the wall with well, the left side is kenny schrader goes by but the racetrack is almost completely blocked here there we see the 26 car drive on the apron watch dale jarrett right on the bottom of the racetrack almost stop and weave his way through mm -hmm. Terry Labonte did the same thing. Very heads up driving for those guys. Ever see the, oh, I see the night, the 21 car gets in the back of the nine car. Elliot Satter runs in the back of Steve Grissom and turned him sideways going down in turn one. And there's the big pileup. Jeffrey Bodine also involved in that up against the wall. John Andretti hitting the brakes, but look at Jarrett and Labonte squeezing through. On board with DJ. Yeah, I mentioned that he had passed Kenny Wallace on the back stretch going down. Then he sees the smoke. Then he starts slowing down. I think we're going to see the 55 come back by. Yes, sideways. Man, did he breathe a sigh of relief there. Steve Grissom out of the car, walking to the ambulance. Jared had a bad weekend last week, but boy, he dodged a major one there. Back at Darlington in a moment. Under caution here at the Pepsi Southern 500 because of a multi-car tangle. And here's what happened when Elliot Sadler came up on Steve Grissom. Well, first of all, he decided he was going to pass Grissom, and then he decides to follow him in the corner. About that time, Grissom backed off to get in turn three, and Elliot Sadler in the 21 car ran in the back of him and just turned him sideways, and he spins, hits the wall, and this looks like Darlington that I've seen for the last 30 years. About 10 cars involved in a big crash down in turn three. And Matt Kendall, we see, terrible break to the DeWalt Ford. On board with Elliot Sadler. Okay, he's going to try to go on the outside, and now he's going on the inside, and now he's going to follow him, and boom, just enough. Well, during this caution period, we had some pit stops, of course. Here's Mayfield, Jeff Burton, and Jeff Gordon, the top three in for their stops. We'll watch the crews work on the cars. Gordon pitted down closer to a pit out, so he was the last to arrive in his pit box. Jeremy Mayfield and the 99 car, Jeff Burton, both guys almost finishing the right sides at the same time. Left sides go down almost exactly at the same time. And we see that the 12 of Jeremy, a little bit in front of the 99, so he'll take that spot. Jeff Gordon falls in, and Ward Burton is the first car that made pit stops out there. I don't know if he changed four tires or two, but... That Ned DJ did not pit, hasn't pitted so far. No, he did not pit. Uh, one reason, I'm sure, was to lead the race and get five bonus points, but it hasn't been that long since they were in the pits, and every time that he comes into the pits, he's been losing from uh, six to eight positions, and so I'm sure they decided just to stay out there this time. Coke pit summary shows that Jeremy Mayfield lost three positions, Jeff Burton lost four, Gordon lost two, Nemechek three, and Rusty Wallace also lost three, but that is a result of the fact that Jarrett didn't pit and the 18 didn't pit. That's right. Two cars did not pit, and Ward Burton had an unbelievable pit stop, so he's a guy that did make the pit stop out in front. Well, Dale Jarrett is among the Noble Five contenders, one of five drivers who can walk off with a $1 million bonus here this afternoon if he should take the checkered flag first. And each driver has a fan 
connected with them that could also win. Right now, there are the Noble Five drivers and where they're running. Have you been football September 12th with the long-awaited return of the Cleveland Browns? They'll host arch-rival Pittsburgh. The following night, ABC's Monday Night Football, the Miami Dolphins battle the Denver Broncos. On the night, John Elway's number seven will be retired. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports today at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina for the Pepsi Southern 500. Now, we mentioned the fact that uh, there is a fan connected with each driver eligible for the $1 million bonus. And if his driver wins the million, so will the fan. There are, are the uh, five drivers and where they are running right now. Now, the fans are positioned in a stand right near Victory Lane, hoping that their driver, of course, will drive in there and they can walk off with a million. Glenn Keck is connected with Dale Jarrett. Mark Martin, his driver is Johnny Bowser. Uh, Gerald Walsh with the 18, Walsh with the 18 car, Phyllis Farmer with Jeff Burton, and Amy Bordenay is with the 20 car of Tony Stewart. Bobby Labonte made another pit stop. Uh, he was running in second spot, or I believe in the top five, and he just made another pit stop. Tony Stewart is one lap down in 25th position. Still having problems with that car, Bill? Yeah, Bob, and they thought maybe uh, it was going to be uh, the ratchet in the rear end, but they checked that, and that appears not to be the problem. So they really have no idea what's wrong with the car. They have tried everything. It is just very, very, very loose, and Tony's very unhappy with it. So uh, they're going to try and put a rubber in next time they get a chance to stop, but uh, really they are struggling here. John Kernan? Matt Kenseth has been checked out at the Care Center. Matt, you all right? Yeah, I feel good. Race car's not too good, but... Uh... Uh, Dwell Ford is running really good today. Um, did a bad job qualifying, got us in the back stretch, but all the way up to ninth there, you know, before that last pit stop. So uh, just saw the wreck, but couldn't get slowed down or stop for it. Matt Kenseth, it's good to say he's okay, but he is out of the race. We'll see him in another Winston Cup race at Dover, Bob. Still under caution, uh, the crew cam today is being worn by one of Bobby Labonte's crew members. He's Barry Cook, the rear tire changer. Labonte stops, Barry goes around. That's off. Takes the towel, Todd Meredith jams that rear tire in. Jason Lee lets the jack down. They go around to the rear. Tire comes off. Meredith slams another one on there. Folks, it's just that easy. Go, Bobby, go. Just that easy? <laughs> <laughs> Under caution with 153 laps completed at Darlington, Dale Jarrett leads. The lap completed under green. Dale Earnhardt has gotten his lap back. Dale Jarrett is the leader of the race. Ward Burton is running in second. And the 97 of Chad Little is also trying to move up there and get his lap back. Jeff Gordon running third. Earnhardt in 21st position, though, so he wants to, he'd love to see a caution. Nobody's pulling away from Jarrett right now. He has fresh tires on that Chevrolet and was taken off. Jarrett did not stop here that caution. His tires uh, have uh, more laps than most of the others. Ward Burton goes up the racetrack, opening the bottom lane for Jeff Gordon and for Jeremy Mayfield. And John has more on Jarrett. Bob, I just talked to DJ's crew chief, and he said, Todd Ferret said that the, the tires are only seven laps old, seven laps of a green flag competition. He says with a smile, I think we'll be okay. And hey, looks like they're doing pretty well so far. About uh, 10 laps into this run, the other guys should equal off to about the same lap times that Dale Jarrett's running. So if he can hang on to the spot that he's in right now in the first spot for the next 10 laps, he should be all right. Now what Dale Jarrett would love to see is this race go green for the rest of the day. Then the pit stops become even. Making a pit stop, there's no advantage or disadvantage depending on the backstretch. Jerry now has an update on the 22 car of Ward Burton. Right now he's second. And Bob, the reason he came off pit road so quickly was because they only changed two right side tires. You heard John Curtin say a moment ago they only had five or six green flag laps on those tires anyway. So two right side tires for Ward Burton and some wedge. But here again, the problem is that his throttle is beginning to stick again. He cannot get the throttle to come all the way back. He's having to use his foot on the brake to slow the car down, and he's concerned about using up the brake. And Jeremy Mayfield goes by Jeff Burton and moves into the fourth position. And we see Ward Burton and Jeff Gordon, second through five, nose to tail. 
Chad Little has gotten around Dale Jarrett, got back on the lead lap. He is in 22nd position as we see this battle for a second. Gordon looking to the inside down the front stretch here, trying to pick out the second spot from Ward. And here goes the 12 car, Jeremy Mayfield. Goes by Jeff Gordon, moves in the third. Picked up two positions here in the last two laps, and Jeff Burton also down to the inside of Gordon and picking up another spot, and Nemechek is also right there. And we see Mark Mark trying to get by Rusty Wallace. He will do it. Nemechek on the inside of Jeff Gordon. And Nemechek's got a strong car. Cannot make the challenge this time, but Joe has been up there in the top ten all afternoon. Jeremy Mayfield has led the most laps, 69. Jeff Gordon has been out front, 41 laps. Ward Burton for 30. Jared is leading his 14th lap. Other leaders have included Jeff Burton for five, Mark Martin for two, and Joe Nemechek was at the front of the field for one lap. And right see Jeff Burton closes in right on the back bumper of Jeremy Mayfield. Down the back stretch in turn three. Jeremy goes up the racetrack. Is Jeff going to go on the inside? Looks like he might. He's going to try, but can he get the traction? And he's coming off of that turn. Uh, yeah, he's got pretty good traction there. He'll make the pass going into turn one. Last lap, he was the fastest car on the racetrack. He was at that time because of the fact that he had to maneuver around a slower car or around uh, Jeremy Mayfield. But Burton is a very fast race car. Well, he is really coming off of that turn, too. Watch as he just blows right up on the inside of his brother Ward and takes over second spot. So we have two noble five contenders that are running in the first and second positions, Jarrett and Jeff Burton. The Pennzoil copter cam providing these overhead shots of the cars as they make their way down into the corner. They're running 1st, 2nd, 7th, 19th, and 24th with Tony Stewart having the biggest struggle here so far. Now, Jeff Gordon takes away the 4th spot from Ward Burton. And Jeremy Mayfield had just gone by Ward and moved into the 2nd spot. And there comes Nemechek right up on the back bumper of Ward Burton. Driving to the inside is Nemechek. Well, oh, what a tough spot. He makes a pass. And now Mark Martin will try the same maneuver at the other end of the racetrack. Mark Martin up into sixth position now. Ward Burton. Well, not, not so not fast. Quite. Not so fast there, big boy. Yeah, well, now he takes it away. I knew he was. Oh. continues to be the fastest car on the racetrack that last lap the only driver over 159 miles an hour a full mile an hour faster than the leader Dale Jarrett but Jarrett still has a three tenths of a second lead and he has Chad Little between himself and Jeff Burton yeah, he was able to get back around Chad Little put Chad lap down Jeff Burton passes Chad Little, and there are no cars between him and the flapping back bumper of Dale Jarrett. He received that in an earlier incident here today, but not affecting the handling or the driving of the car. Jarrett leads Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, Jeff Gordon, and Joni Macek at Darlington. Welcome back to Darlington, South Carolina. Jeff Burton has taken the lead from Dale Jarrett. Now the 10 car of Ricky Rudd is very slow on the racetrack. Dropped off the pace and is he going to make it to pit road? Well, he's right at the entrance and rolling very, very slow. As you can see, apparently he has lost power. He, is, he went down on the inside of the racetrack coming off of turn uh, 
four and has coasted all the way around. He actually is off the racetrack now and out of out of harm's way as far as the racing on the track is concerned. So hopefully no caution here. Ricky picked up three positions as a result of his third place finish at Bristol last weekend. Three position in the point standings to 32nd. Here's how Burton got the lead from DJ. Going into turn one, DJ just slowed down. We've got a caution. I guess that is for Rudd's car or whatever. But uh, Dale Earnhardt, boy, by the skin of his teeth, stays on the lead <laughs> lap because Jeff Burton was working on it. So Dale Earnhardt, who was running back in 20th spot, will remain the last car on the lead lap as the caution waves for the another time as the stall car of Ricky Rudd is off the corner in turn number four in the entrance to the pit lane. We'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment. Back at Darlington, where the 60 car of Jeffrey Bodine entered the pits, and as you can see, as he is being held there. The pits are not open yet. They are now, because uh, the leaders are coming in. Tow truck has pushed Ricky Rudd's car off pit road. He was sitting there just a moment ago, so the last time by pit road, the car is gone, and it is open. Down to Bill Weber. Well, Jeff Burton leads him down pit road. No expected changes here. They are going to pull some tape off the front grill and pull a layer of plastic off the windshield. Really, at this point, just need to tap off the gas. Jeremy Mayfield's going to get right side tires, left side tires, and fuel, but no changes for him. In fact, they've got a little bit to tighten up the 12 throughout the race, but not the last two stops. Let's check on Gordon with punch. Half around back in the right rear. The car a little bit too tight now. The 99 car is out the 12 car and down and Gordon stop and will he beat Jeff Burton at the end of pit road no he will not as they came racing door to door let's go to the backstretch pits and John Curtin leader, points leader Dale Jarrett is in four tire change there will be no adjustment the car has already been adjusted five full rounds down on the track bar to tighten it up they made an air pressure adjustment here comes Jeff Burton Jeff Gordon Jeremy Mayfield Mark Martin left side's going on Dale Jarrett he's going to lose a whole bushel full of positions is a little slow on the left front tire but he's down in the way also four tires for Terry Labonte it looks like Steve Park is going to win the race off pit road here on the backstretch he too took on four tires Park does indeed leave Jared and Bobby or other Terry Labonte out of the backstretch pits now they catch up with those who pitted earlier on the front stretch Still under caution, so that allows us to take another break at the Pepsi Southern 500 in Darlington. We'll be right back. I work on cars for a living, so I know top-notch parts when I see them. And so does my Prado Pro. Don't wait for your starter or alternator to go out. Bring them in for a free test. If they're bad, we'll recommend professional quality Ampere starters and alternators. Now $5 off. These top-notch products and more, all at a low pronto price. Like I say, when you got to get it right, get it pronto. Save energy with John's Manville Insulation from Menard. R11 Craft Space Insulation has a built-in vapor barrier. On sale, $8.88 a roll. R25 Unfaced Attic Insulation, just $9.99 a roll. Save some more energy with a Mastercraft Storm and Screen Door by Larson. With life I think the first race was not a NASCAR sanctioned race. Welcome back to Darlington, South Carolina. Labor Day weekend tradition underway. The Pepsi Southern 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. We are nearing the halfway point. Next time around, they'll complete lap number 179. This caution was because of Ricky Rudd's stalled car. We do have a couple of medical updates. First of all, Jerry Nadeau is awake and alert. They probably are going to hold him overnight at the uh, hospital in Florence, BP. It's Carolina Hospital or something in Florence. Folks, yes. I gave you some bum information. It's <laughs> not going back to Charlotte. I don't know where I got this. <laughs> Ted Musgrave has been checked out from that accident uh, that occurred earlier. He's okay. We're awaiting word on Steve Grissom, who was also involved in the crash. Well, this place, of course, just reeks with history. It was the first super speedway built for the stock cars back in 1949 for 1950. 
Darlington had been built nearly a decade before Daytona, but its original purpose was not the stock cars, rather open-wheeled Indianapolis-type machines that grabbed the attention of Harold Brazenton on a fateful trip up north. It was not built to be a stock car track. It was built to showcase the Indianapolis cars. Well, I got in the car, a few friends of myself, and we went to Indy. Well, after I saw what I estimated was about 200,000 people, I, I, I just couldn't believe all those people would go to see a race. So after watching the Indy cars run and the speed they obtained, I got to thinking that a stock car race, uh, it showed a mechanic and the bookkeeper and the lawyer and the doctor and everybody would take a, a very big interest in it. Darlington was scheduled to open in 1950, but Brazington was about to get a big lesson in promoting. Unlike the movie script, he built it but no one was coming. They got down to within a short time in front of the events, and they had hardly any entries. Uh, so uh, Harold Brazenton called my father and asked him if he could, they could, uh, NASCAR could come in. Uh, and it was really on short notice. Maybe I'd say six weeks, could have been a month. But in any event, he said yes, and we had 75 cars. Took the green flag that day, and it's been a stock car track ever since. Indeed it has, and it's hosting its 50th Pepsi Southern 500 here this afternoon. That was another moment from ESPN's celebration with NASCAR of their 50th anniversary. We are set to go back to racing. Jeff Burton is the leader of the race, followed by Gordon, Mayfield, Martin, Green flag, Green and Ward Burton. We talk about what a disadvantage it is pitting on the backstretch. Dale Jarrett was a leader of the race when that caution flag fell. Dale Earnhardt had just gotten his lap back. Right now, DJ is back in 7th, 16th position. Earnhardt is 14th. He actually got back on the racetrack quicker than Earnhardt to make his pit stop. And the coach pit summary, look at Jarrett. Second to 17th. And after that, Bobby Labonte came in the pits. Bobby stayed out there and led lap during the caution. And uh, so he now is back behind it. Wow, look at this action going down in turn one. Ward Burton drives on the inside of Mark Martin. Meanwhile, Jeremy Mayfield goes by Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Burton says, see ya. He just checked out on these guys. Here goes Ward Burton on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Mark Martin's going to try to follow. And they're going to try to put Jeff all the way back. Here comes Bobby Hamilton. Ward Burton's car slides up the race track. And Kenny Irwin is into the wall in car number 28. Yeah, he's... Uh, Narrowed that car a little bit. Going to be dropping down to the inside of the track. Damage on the right side as he put the Darlington strike on her. Next up, new right side tires. we got to get the fenders off. We sure do because he mashed them in pretty good. You can see the smoke coming out of his tire smoke. Irwin was our pole sitter for this race. But has never led so far and in fact is going to go more. The wheel is the same. I did hit it hard though. On the Jet ball. We got pretty good tire rub, so let's come on in. Let's make sure we get the tire rub fixed before we go back out. New tires, take the hammers with you. He said the steering wheel is in the same spot. But then he added the PS, I did hit it hard. Yeah. See how hard he hit the wall in that Texaco Halvin Ford. Hard contact, so there'll be more than sheet metal bent on that car. Jerry Punch is right there. And Doug Reichert is who you heard talking on the radio a moment ago, too, kid here. We'll take a look at the right side of the car. It is pancake as Benny said he hit a ton using the sledgehammer now, a five-pound sledge on the right front. Now the right rear, they're using a rolling bar trying to roll the fender off the right rear tire. He was today's pole sitter and now the car fairly significantly damaged on the right side. They're trying to get him to stay put so they can get that fender pulled away from the right front. They're saying roll easy, roll easy, roll easy. They're trying to get the right rear fender and wanting to back up a little bit, trying to get clearance. But the way those fenders have been buckled down and sharpened, if he were to go away, that would cut a tire very, very easily. What a tough break for Kenny Irwin, who was the guy on the pole who let him down to the green flag. From what Rusty Wallace's onboard camera, we take a look.
Looks like he's trying to get on the outside of Chad Little going down in that corner, and it doesn't take much going in turn three. Jeff Burton has opened up a huge lead. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt has come into the pits or is coming in or slowing down. He was sliding all over the track. A number of cars got by him. Let's see if he's going to be able to get down. No, he couldn't that time. He has lost a number of positions. All the way back to 16th now. Down to Bill Weber. Yeah, Bob, it's the left front. They think the left front's going down. Blake Weber's running down to his pits. Hustle, Bill. <laughs> he's, he's coming down that way, Bill. So you might be able to, if you run fast, you might be able to get up for Earnhardt just there. Here is Earnhardt slowing now and deciding to come in to make the pit stop. Bill, are you there yet? I'm there, Bob. <laughs> Atta boy. They talked about this for two laps, fortunately. They think it's the left front. They're going to go ahead and perhaps change all four. Earnhardt tried to feel it out. They thought it might just be air pressure. They're going to go ahead and change right side. Now cleaning the grill. No conversation. It'll be a four-tire change. It's very costly because, remember, he just didn't get his left back on that last caution. Does have some seat metal damage around that left front tire. Those are 31 tires you just put on. 19.2 second pit stop for Dale Earnhardt. And Bill, you don't have to jog tomorrow because you got your extra exercise in today. Good job. That was a noble job by Bill running down the uh, pit road. But how about that cameraman carrying a camera? He yeah. got there also. <laughs> well, Dale Earnhardt lost a lap, got it back, and now loses it again with his unscheduled pit stop here to change the tires. There's uh, Jeff Burton, who has opened up more than a two-second lead on Jeremy Mayfield. As a matter of fact, we have gone past the halfway point, and so Jeff Burton's picked up the $10,000 bonus for Gatorade at leading at the halfway point. Lowe's Field Summary has the points as of now, with Gordon up one and Bobby Labonte down one in the NASCAR Winston Cup points battle for 1999. Their second place, Jeremy Mayfield. Third is going to be Ward Burton and Jeff Gordon. And the sixth car of Mark Martin is running in the fifth position. There's Ward, about three seconds behind. Jeff Gordon, who has led 41 laps so far here today. Jeremy Mayfield remains the driver who has led the lap, the most laps at 69. Mark Martin has been out front for two circuits. Bobby Hamilton, the Kodak Film Chevrolet, is currently running in the sixth position. There we see him just too far behind the Mark Martin automobile. And Joe Nemechek continues to give that Bell South car a good run here this afternoon. He is in seventh position. We haven't talked a great deal about the guy who is running in eighth position, Ned, but Kevin LePage is doing well. Yes, he is having a good run. He had a good qualifying run starting in the ninth position. He now is in eighth position, so he's kept his uh, nose clean all day. As a matter of fact, had the best qualifying position of any of the Jack Roush cars here for the Pepsi Southern 500. And he is highest in NASCAR Winston Cup points without a top 10. So he may be on his way to his first top 10 finish. His best finish has been at Talladega, where he was 12th. Now the two and the 23 car are running in ninth and 10th. There's Rusty. He's having a tough time. The hand is not what he needs on his Miller Ford. And there's uh, Dale Jarrett has caught this pack of cars. The 21 car, Elliot Sadler, is running in 11th position. Spencer, as you see there, number 23, is running in 10th place. On board with DJ, just ahead is 11th place, Elliot Sadler. Down the back stretch. Jarrett continues to fight back from his handicap, pitting on the back stretch. The car has performed well, and so has the team on their pit stops. They've been down in the 15-second area all day long. Now, Bill Weber has an update on Earnhardt's tire. 
If uh, Dale Earnhardt has tremendous feel for a race car, you can see these holes are just slightly, ever so slightly out of round. During that last pit stop, when he just came in, Richard Childress kept saying, hit the left front hard, hit the left front hard. They wanted to make sure the lug nuts were tight. You, normally, these are very oblong when lug nuts are loose. These just slightly oblong. Earnhardt felt it on like the second lap under green. They came in, got it off. It was a tire that they got from the 31 car after Mike uh, Skinner fell out. A lot of times, teammates will swap tires to try and get a better match on the four set. In fact, uh, this uh, 99 car has tires from the 17 car, Kenseth, that fell out earlier. But that was Earnhardt's problem. And the 99 car is just continuing to stretch out his advantage over Jeremy Mayfield. The interval is now up to more than two and three quarter seconds as Jeff Burton leads. Almost 200 laps out of 367 are complete in the 50th annual Pepsi Southern 500. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the Pepsi Southern 500 from Darlington, being brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. By the Y Track Grand Prix by Pontiac, wider is better. And by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil, add more life to your car. 201 laps completed. We refresh your memory on who the five drivers are eligible for the million dollar bonus. Burton, Labonte, Stewart, Martin, and Dale Jarrett. Those five drivers can win a bonus of a million dollars if they win here this afternoon. And here is where they're running at the moment with 202 laps completed. Jeff Burton is the leader. Martin is fifth. Jared 11th, Labonte 17th, and Tony Stewart is in 18th position, and he is the only one among the top, the five Noble Five drivers not on the lead lap. The Pennzoil Copter Cam has these overhead shots of the egg-shaped Darlington Raceway where this 50th classic auto race is being staged here this afternoon. The 10-car Ricky Rudd broke a distributor, however, he, as you can see there in the bottom of your screen, is back in the race. That is going to be about 30, a couple laps down. Moments ago, the 77 car Robert Presley was into the Darlington wall for the second time this afternoon. There it is. Wow. But once again, he, he did not hit it that hard. We saw some tire smoke uh, brushing the wall, but still not a lot of contact with the 77. Jerry, how about an update on the 28 car of Kenny Irwin, who has had his problems today from the pole position. He's now 12 laps down in 30 seconds. Well, Bob, he just spent seven laps back in the pits a moment ago when we went to break. He came back down pit road, and they, they had a problem with the toe in in the front of the car. They set the front toe in and were working more on the right side. Sheet metal, and they went ahead and changed four tires while they were in here. But a tough break for Kenny Irwin. He was trying so hard, but now, as you said, 12 laps down. They have fixed the toe end, but the car has some sheet metal damage on the right side. The rookie of the year in NASCAR Winston Cup competition last year. Great bestest rookie of the year. I just got hit in the back by BP is the reason I inserted the Ray bestest. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Boy, that interval just continues to grow, doesn't it? Jeff just keeps driving away. Yeah, it's up to 3.6 seconds ahead now of Jeremy Mayfield, and he's coming up not too far from lapping Bobby Labonte, who is running in 17th position. Bobby is uh, about 28 seconds behind and about to go a lap down before too long. Bill, the 12 car is still in there, but he's just fallen back and back from Jeff Burton. Yeah, Bob, and actually they're pretty in pretty good shape. That last caution helped them out quite a bit. We talked about how Earnhardt had tires from the 31 car. Well, just before that last caution, the previous stop, Jeremy Mayfield had his own right side tires, but he had left side tires from the 36 car, which had fallen out of the race. That combination was absolutely no good. He's got all 12 tires on that car now. He's got four tires on the team, of course. And the 12 bucks told me that's because they got crunchy m and tires instead of regular ones. Man, he's getting up close to that outside rotated wall. <laughs> Jeremy Mayfield, of course, came into the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season with great hopes after a great year, but it hasn't gone all that well for him. After 23 races, Jeremy 
has uh, fallen six positions in the point standings from where he was this time last year. And John Andretti is down three positions. There's a 22 of Ward Burton, who continues to run in the third spot, about four seconds behind his brother. Rusty Wallace has been losing a lot of positions. He was running in the ninth position just a couple of laps ago. Now he's all the way back to 13th, and there's Ken Schrader. You see out his rearview mirror, or at the back of his car, is coming up on him. Schrader is running in the 15th position. Rusty now back to 14th, apparently, because Steve Park has gotten by Never a win here at Darlington, but Rusty has been a second on two different occasions, most recently in the Southern 500 in 1988. There Steve Park. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. All right, Steve Park, defense off. Oh, how about Jeff Gordon has closed up on the back bumper of Ward Burton, and Ward says, okay, Jeff, I see your are on that. Go ahead, take over this third spot. Because the last few laps, Jeff Gordon has been, the DuPont Chevrolet, has been a little bit quicker than the 99 car. Not much, but a little bit. But right now, Jeff Gordon is a little under five seconds.